500 years. The craftsmanship seen in the building of Greek temples has never been surpassed. Every single massive block was hand carved and set in place using a complex crane. We know a lot about cranes eh, thanks to direct information left by ancient builders in some representations, depictions, etc., on uh, marble. It was powered by 10 men at most. The crane was 27 meters tall and it had the capacity to move parallel to the building and also to lean towards the building to lift the stone, then horizontally to move the stone and then slowly to lower the stone to the level of positioning. The secret of this mega machine? Productivity. The mega cranes of the classical age were able to hold weights of up to 20 tons. These capstans increased the worker's efficiency by 20. Then the pulleys above increased it further by three. So the combination of capstans and pulleys meant that the work of 10 men became that of 600 men. Almost overnight, productivity skyrocketed. It's no wonder then that the mega cranes of Athens were able to raise a block of stone every 15 minutes, and the entire Parthenon was finished in under 10 years a tenth of the time it took to build the Great Pyramid at Giza. Conquests, followed by rapid building programs. Monuments were erected that left defeated territories intimidated for centuries. But the Romans did not have hundreds of years, like the Egyptians, to allow them to build these huge structures. They needed to find fast techniques, and to achieve this, they invented massive cranes to raise the buildings from the ground in record time. Rome called on the engineering genius of its finest architect, a man named Vitruvius. He devised several visionary designs for ancient cranes that were to prove instrumental in building the colossal structures of the Roman Empire. His most influential design used a wheel in order to multiply the awesome lifting power of the machine. The wheel was driven by a crew of five men walking inside. It would also use an intriguing technical approach when lifting a block of marble. A set of metal wedges would be inserted into an opening in the block of stone, which would slide into a specially constructed hole in the block. When all three wedges were in place and a locking pin attached, the block could be lifted. The large weight of the blocks helped lock them firmly in place as they were lifted. It was an ingenious method of lifting a stone block without the need of ropes under the stone. Some of Rome's most amazing structures were built using the same types of mega cranes, such as the awe-inspiring Trajan Column. Trajan's Column is a remarkable monument which towers high above Rome and which once would have been surrounded. What kind of crane could possibly have been used to achieve such a feat? On the side of a Roman funeral relief, called the Relief of Hattari, is a find of supreme significance. It offers unique insight into how a crane would have been used in ancient Rome. It reveals that the Romans used quintuple pulley systems powered by a crew of five specialized workers. It proves once and for all that the Romans had far more advanced crane technology than any other civilization in the ancient world. The Roman engineers constructing Trajan's column used the most sophisticated cranes of their time. When Rome imported Egyptian obelisks, these powerful lifting devices were also used to erect the huge slabs of stone. Sadly, no fully intact cranes survive from the ancient world. It is only from works such as these magnificent obelisks that we can piece together the secrets of the cranes the ancient builders would have used. Yet in Germany, one remarkable new project is changing that. A team of modern engineers have reconstructed an ancient crane for the first time. Can we at last uncover how the ancient mega cranes would have looked in their heyday? This amazing crane was built 20 years ago as a reconstruction. So this part of the crane is the capstan. That's the point where we start pulling. So four men are necessary to push these handles, and by doing so, winding up the cable on this vertical axle right here. From the capstan to the main crane, you get one cable, and this cable being wound up on the main wheel over there. 
This is the very basic principle of a transmission. So while winding up this cable from the capstan on the big wheel, at the same time you've got the small wheels on the axle winding up the cable from the stones that's to be lifted. That's very much the powerhouse of the grain. In this transmission you get a fourfold power transmission. So you need four times the length of the cable, but you only need a fourth part of the power to pull it. This extraordinary device is based on the same exact principles as every modern gearbox. Transmission increases the length of cable needed, but decreases the power needed to achieve activation. Right here you see very important feature of lifting up the stone block. This is a block with pulley wheels, and you see a number of pulley wheels down here and another set of pulley wheels up here. We have a sequence of machines lined up so every time you reduce the power necessary and you increase the length of cable and you line this up a number of times and this in the end is very efficient. So although the Xanton crane uses pulley technology to increase the power of man, the ancients also had another, even more unbelievable trick up their sleeves. They used wheels which could be automated to create power, giving birth to a new mega machine. Romans at an ancient flour mill the in the work. south of France Chris at Barbagall. makes do with students. All right, Rachel, let's go. Start rolling. Rachel is ten times lighter than the block, but with the crane's mechanical advantage, she should be able to raise it single-handed. And she does. <laughs> it just feels like I'm running uphill. She's able to lift a 1,200-pound block with very little effort, like you said, other than just running uphill. That's all that it takes. It works. But could this really be the way that the Colosseum's builders lifted their massive stones, 15 stories in the air? Rachel calls in reinforcements. For the crane to be proven a success, they need to lift over two and a half tons. All right, so you got 5,200 pounds. You think three people can do it? Absolutely. All right, let's see what you got. The way the pulley system works, the teams are going to have to walk a long way before they see the block move. The ropes are stretching up here. The tension is audible in the ropes and the wood. Modern construction sites are noise-filled places, but this is the sound of ancient Roman engineering. Rachel, Harrison, and Giglio have been walking for three minutes. We've got liftoff. Let's see it. And 2.5 tons has lifted off the ground. Hey, that's good. Hold up right there. All right, so you got 5,200 pounds, four feet off the ground. Right. How hard was that? It was really? tough, but uh, considering we did that with just three people. What do you, yeah. what do you got a breath for? He believes in his technique, but he's had some setbacks in the past. One day I got thrown over top of a block, and a couple times I had the blocks roll off the top and almost land on my feet. One time I knocked myself out cold on the concrete. 